once more after having him on stream earlier on against Charlie Kerr has this accomplishment to his name, a first time regional player and getting the job done here in the top four now. A lot of new faces. This is what I always hope to see, Kyle, is some new names making their places known amongst the best of the best. I know that Alexander certainly has a long way to go, but at the end of the day, He's made a fantastic meta call for this event. Yeah, worked out very well. Lugia V-Star can get the job done up against a lot of decks. Maybe even the mirror match. Dorian Stotts also showing up. Washington State top four way back in 2015. A long time player versus a new face. And Dorian also making that strong meta call with the colorless Lugia. A it seemed to come out almost out of nowhere because of Mew EX. Oh, this is a deck to play. It's going to be great and a little bit untested, but he believed and is rewarded. Yeah, maybe we'll get to speak with Dorian a little more about these accomplishments. Looks like a very well-known player in the senior division much uh, almost 10 years ago, it looks like. Mm -hmm. It's now coming back out in the Masters division, finding some success here and looking to add to those accomplishments with the Lugia V-Star. I'm trying to dig deeper into the deck list here, Kyle, and the only big difference that jumping, that's jumping out to me right now is Dorian is not on the Weird Ear. That's right. Yep, it's just Alexander with the Weird Ear, so the potential for one-hit knockouts basically lies in the Luxray and the Weird Ear in this matchup. Gotta take a look at uh, which, which player is going to be ahead in prize cards. That back and forth can be very interesting as you try to piece together that wild combo of Luxray along with that reversal energy and a boss's orders. It ends up being very b bizarre. A lot of the Colorless Lugia players seem to be content to hit tons of Lost Zone, whereas a matchup they feel very favored. And now, as all of those Lost Zone players have gotten, you know, eliminated, it's okay, but have you studied the mirror match? We know that Alexander got a little bit of experience earlier on, and maybe that will translate here in the top four match. The prizes look pretty decent for both sides. Yeah, you know, what, over a year ago, it only mattered what the mirror match looked like with mm -hmm. Lugia. That's all you'd ever see. So this is uh, a little bit different for our players. We are gonna get underway, however. And who is starting things off? Looks like it is oh. Alexander Flato's <laughs> double Luminion V start. Uh oh, <laughs> we're swimming. Nest ball as an opener at the very least. It's a liability to have the fish there. Low HP, worth two prizes. You hate to see it. And I think it's really going to come down to what we saw in the top eight. Whichever player can knock out the Luminion V first might be favored here, Kyle. Well, thankfully, both of these players are featuring two copies of Collapse Stadium, so maybe this Pokemon won't be uh, too long for the table. Yeah, Alexander's probably already thinking about that line. I want to fill up my bench as quickly as possible, so when mine or my opponent's Collapse Stadium hits, I'll be able to get rid of this liability fish. Just attached of a jet energy to Lugia V to bring it into the active. And a pass over to Dorian. Has great ball. There's wow. been a lot of debate around the specific math for this ball search card. And I guess for Colorless Lugia, somehow, after the numbers are crunched, it's worth it. Finds a Lugia V. Yep. It's uh, going to work out there. I find this Pokemon. The hand, however, I'm a little bit worried about. <laughs> Saw therapeutic energy double. Uh, Archaeops and double bosses orders. I'm not sure if there's another piece to the puzzle, but if not, this could be a dangerous opening turn. Yeah, if Dorian does oh, no. miss out on the opportunity to get this Lugia V into the active, has to keep this Luminion V into Alexander's next turn where Lugia V Star might come through. Yeah, it's, it's a bet you just have to take at this point, Kyle. There's uh, there's nothing else you can do. You can buy time with the bosses orders, bring up that Luminion, okay. and hopefully slow down your opponent but Alexander has the potential to find a big swing turn here. One Archaeops in hand looks like a potential boss's order or a professor's research in hand too. So the attack certainly lined up to at least take a knockout on the Luminion. So is it going to be an attach retreat? A couple energy still in the hand, one reversal I see. Oh, is he playing this slow? This is looking like a much older format, Kyle. Both players kind of just jockeying for position before pulling the trigger on the summoning star. Doesn't seem to be a way to grab the Lugia V-Star in the hand. There's some big resources in the hand. The reversal energy, the collapse stadium. 
The, you, could, you could throw away this hand to research, right? Oh, it's just going to be read the win. This is Ooh. so risky. Taking it real slow has the read that There's Dorian Stotts doesn't no have anything going on. on. The other side. Exactly. Just, Alexander knew. There's just three birds in the hand. Three birds in the hand is worth. <laughs> There's none in the bush. <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to make up a new saying here, you, Kyle. You can't read the wind. You lose. Double Let's turbo. Let's read the wind. <laughs> Double turbo, attach, retreat. Colorless Lugia. Boss's orders once again <laughs> trying to stall Luminion. Read the wind. All right, so Alexander Flatos had the option to go for a big extension with Iono or Professor's Research. Didn't get punished by going for a slow read the wind, oh. but wants to accelerate and gets rewarded with capturing Aroma heads. Yeah, that is nice there. There's an Ultra Ball in hand, it looks like, too. So there's plenty going on this turn. I think this is yeah, going to be is a Lugia V-Star knockout. And is Alexander going to push his advantage even more? Oh, no, it has the double Archeops. I was yeah. going to say, you go for single Archeops, but... Yeah, discards both Archeops, gets Lugia V-Star, and yeah, just needs to bring it back into the active. We can Primal Turbo to the Luminion, just get that other retreat. After everything is said and done, maybe Alexander will go for the Professor's Research, try, try to draw into another jet. Don't think you need to at this point. Honestly, you're holding on to boss's orders. You're going to knock out a Lugia V. You're just waiting for your opponent to bench another Lugia V, as that's the only way that this deck operates. And at that point, you know that you're going to just continue to knock out that Pokemon. Use the Reversal Energy as a way to retreat. Use the Archeops to load this Pokemon up with four energies that are not double turbo. Easy knockout lined up. And there's still not much going on in Dorian's hand other than Iono. Yeah, this is night and day from the last time we saw Alexander on the stream. He's actually playing a real game of Lugia here, Kyle. And I loved that audacious read of saying... I can squeeze in one, read the wind here. My opponent has nothing going on and is now able to, you know, get a few more cards in the hand and then also maintain this very dominant posture for the mirror. Yeah, for Dorian, at least either way, your read the wind was going to work or it, you're going to get knocked out. of the, There's a boss's orders in hand, no supporter played. So this Lugia was going to be knocked out either way for Alex. And Dorian already used two bosses' orders just to kind of keep alive in this match. Has to concede. And that's the mirror, ladies and gentlemen. Going to move on to a swift game two. Alexander Flatos spent the bad luck earlier on the stream. And it's now coming back to reward him here in top four. That's, you know, I, I'll, I'll accept the loss early if it means that I get the luck here. <laughs> I hesitate to call it luck, though, because... There was not much going on in that hand. Had to use Read the Wind, try to buy a little bit of time, but... Let but me tell you, that's a very specific flavor of copium <laughs> that has been passed down throughout the ages the, from the ancient card gamer text of, oh, I'm just going to lose now so that I'll be luckier later. It's the, uh, the Ecto Cooler. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> well, as we uh, have our eyes on game number two, Dorian has to think... I like going first. <laughs> this has to be better yeah. than starting Luminion and watching my opponent play a game that uh, I tried to play. Yeah, there wasn't actually a really strong reaction out of Dorian. After so many games throughout day one into day two, 11-2-2, two two, has seen it all. This is a player that has seen it all, not just with Lugia, but just by playing Pokemon for so long. That sometimes you just get the bad beat and you shuffle up your nice pink favorite sleeves. You're in top four. Okay. You just got to rely on your deck to show up for you when the chips are down, when it matters most. And this is the X factor that shows up from time to time, Kyle. There's certain players that when their back is against the wall, they seem to tap into some well of protagonist energy. And it could be the pendulum swinging the other way and Dorian is going to slaughter Alexander's board state before he can get set up. You know, you might be on to something because I've seen the opening hands. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll, I'll leave it at that as we will <laughs> soon flip over our starting Pokemon. But three energies in the prize cards for Alexander. Two collapse stadium for Dorian. Uh-oh. But maybe you can draw those at the right time. Here's the matchup you're looking for, ladies and gents. Oh, baby. Gift energy pass on the Lugia V. Alexander starting with Drapion V, an attacker that you love to pack for the Mew matchup, but doesn't do a whole lot for this deck. 
right now, capturing Aroma, hitting Tails for a basic. Y you have to think that that'd be an okay flip. You can at least see a Lukia, but with the hand the way it is, there might be two Archeops in the discard pile this turn. This is always so terrifying. When you see your opponent start with the Lugia in the attachment, there's always the worry they have the nut hand of just Ultra Ball, double Archeops, find Lugia V-Star, and they're off to the races before you can even put up a fight. Yeah, it's certainly looking like it. This is an Ultra Ball potential discard Professor Burnett. No, we're just going to use the Professor Burnett here. Hold on to that resource of the research for the next turn. And now with two Archeops in the discard pile, a solo Lugia V. Is Alexander going to roll the dice once more that Dorian won't be able to punish this, just preemptively Ultra Ball for Lugia V-Star, or grab a second Lugia V? Yeah, without the V-Guard energy, most players tend to lean towards the second Lugia V in this spot. However, your opponent didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's no Archeops in the discard pile on the other side for Dorian. There's one energy on the Lugia V. So taking a risk here, going for the Lugia V-Star. All right. I mean, he's got the buffer, right? Game number two, you're already up a quick game one. Plenty of time left on the clock. Alexander has shown his propensity to take these uh, riskier lines. And we'll see if Dorian can capitalize. Dorian knows that that hand is gasoline <laughs> with the way that everything just played out there. Potentially throwing away a Burnett, then using a Burnett, then using multiple Ultra Ball there, and not ending with another card played down. There's an Iono in hand. Is there anything else to help out? Lugia, V-Star, one Archeops I think I'm seeing in the hand. No way to discard it from what I'm seeing. I don't know. I think there's a Professor's Research as the last card there. Double Archeops ah. as well. There you go. Double? Well, I'll be. Dorian Stott's going to get established here on the second turn. Lugia V-Star in the active. Just needs one Primal Turbo to get that Tempest Dive up and running. Beautiful start from uh, Dorian. And after the Professor's Research, Alexander's not worried about boss's orders, of course. So it's just going to be an easy two prizes for Dorian because of the Drap Beyond V. And we'll see now if Alexander is able to respond in kind. Well, the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on there for Alexander. The question now is, can you work this in the combination with the Lux Ray? As that would be a phenomenal uh, counterplay here against the opening aggression of Alugia V-Star. There's a big potential there with the Professor's Research held onto along with the Alugia V-Star. Will all the cards line up? Mm -hmm. I think that this is a great microcosm of the multiple debates going on regarding Colorless Lugia, how it should be built, what Pokemon you should be running. Alexander going yeah. deeper one level to run the Luxray to help out with the Mirror Match or against Single Strike Lugia. The Primal Turbo sets up Lugia V-Star. Ultra Ball to look through for the next attacker to get partially established thanks to the second Primal Turbo. Occasionally you see players favor that Lugia as a, another attacker. You can play that down in a situation like this. Yeah. Use your second Archeops to throw down the V-Guard energy onto mm. that Pokemon and protect it from the other Lugia V that will eventually be a V-Star on the other side for your opponent. Mm -hmm. Doesn't want to go that route. Instead, is comfortable with the single prize strategy. And we'll see if there's enough Pokemon to work into the mix. Certainly plenty of Snorlax to go, and maybe that Radiant Charizard at the end. Yeah, I think because of Dorian's build, once again, folks, not running the weirdier V, leaning much harder into a, a single prize idea, wanted to absolutely double down and hate on the Lost Box decks that hate trying to chew through a bunch of big single prize Pokemon, especially that Snorlax. And when it comes to a mirror match like this, where Alexander has some bigger Pokemon to rely on and some single prize Pokemon as well, could be slightly okay. favored. Well, <laughs> here's another Lugia V-Star found. And overall, this could be a pretty solid turn for Alexander. There's consideration here now to use your summoning star, see these Pokemon, and then get them and the energies out of your deck before you use the, the professor's oh, research. Ooh, goes for the research right away. I was expecting at least one primal turbo. Right. But draw seven. Ooh, couple jets. Ooh, there's Ultra Ball. 
Not, not a terrible punish. Sometimes we've seen these Lugia players actually like having the jet energy specifically in hand to make it easier to get the right Pokemon in the active spot. Oh, Nest Ball's going to take a look for us first to see what all is happening there. Reversal energy in there along with the Lux Race. He's both pieces that he's looking for. Maybe along the way you can establish a Snorlax. Now that Dorian Stotts has kind of, you know, taken first blood, the swelling flash from Luxray is available to strike back with a pretty nice chunk of damage. Yeah, this works out very well. With the jet energy, you can also just promote this Pokemon into the active spot without having to retreat the Lugia V-Star. Ultra Ball certainly has to be taking a look for the yellow guy. Another amazing Pokemon that this deck really likes. Colorless Lugia being able to take advantage of reversal energy is so clutch. Yeah, yeah, it's just the perfect comeback mechanism. You're putting a single prize Pokemon in the active spot after taking two prizes back. And, you know, you're taking a page out of Gardevoir's book where it really makes yep. the prize map awkward for the opponent. Alexander opting for Archeops into the active with the jet energy and then retreats it. That is a way to get Luxray in the active. You could also just put the jet energy there. Either way. It, you're just getting one jet energy out of your hand, I guess, so that you have... It's not going to get shuffled back in with Thigono? Or I, I don't know. It's It's... <laughs> I don't think it matters. Uh, the, the important part is reversal energy is ready to roll there. Yeah, because once you, once you start taking prize cards, the reversal energy, you know, does uh, go offline. But again, the jet energy is very important for being able to get the right attackers into the active at the right time. Yeah, what a big turn here to take the knockout as there was a V knockout on the other side. So now the yeah. prizes will be tied you have to assume that Dorian will take a knockout on this Pokemon, maybe with the Snorlax. And then there's still no reversal Luxray plays at all on the other side for Dorian. It's not getting to use all of the, the Pokemon at their disposal. Yeah, now that the prize cards are even very awkward to swing back on this, fortunately. Snorlax now in the active with that therapeutic energy attached. That means that Thumping Snore won't put it to sleep. It's just going to be a single prize hitting for 180. But as it stands right now, Alexander's probably happy with that trade. The Lux Raid already did its job, did what it needed to do for this mirror match. And now you can just keep chugging along for the prize trade. Great ball, not finding anything. Was that all four boss? I think there was a Mew in there, but just choosing not to take it. Mm. But yeah, there were, there were a lot of boss's orders in there. At this point, considerations may only be thinning the hand down for if gift energy can draw you some cards too. There's so many cards in this hand that just you can't play down yet. It seems like both players are, you know, even cadence, you know, four prizes remaining both, but Alexander is in the driver's seat, has great tempo, thanks to the Lux Ray, has a Lugia V-Star ready to go on the bench with the V-Guard energy attached, and Dorian can't take the risk of setting up a Lugia V that might just get bossed up and KO'd. There's no uh, potential time for it to get the evolution. Instead, Dorian bosses up in Archeops, is going to try to cut off the source of these attackers by taking away Alexander's ability to accelerate energy. Yeah, when you're losing the resource war, you have to mix it up. And attacking the lifeline there of the Primal Turbo can be a way to disrupt that. And there's still not much going on in the hand, even to the point where you might consider throwing a gift energy on the Snorlax just to draw. That does help, certainly, for, for Dorian Stotts. Drew one card off the last gift energy, but after making a bunch of plays this turn, can hopefully thin the hand down and make use of this second gift energy to see a little bit deeper into the deck and find a way out of this. There is still Radiant Charizard for Dorian as a comeback mecha mechanism. Again, no Weirdeer, which is kind of a second way to get a big attack seemingly out of nowhere. Yep. The potential of this Luminion to mix up the, tr the prize exchange is huge. There's a little bit of bait for Alexander. If he takes the knockout on the Luminion, it would activate the reversal energy and maybe walk right into a Luxray of Dorian's own. So have to consider that maybe it's just more worthwhile to take these single prize exchanges left and right. And Alexander 
promoting his own Snorlax. This is just going to become a single prize exchange from this point, and then perhaps Alexander's hoping to just get that Lumineon knockout as the final set of prizes for the turn. We have to be wary, though, right, Kyle, because of the threat of Collapse Stadium, maybe getting rid of those easy prizes before you have a chance to take advantage. There's also still a Luxray that could attack right now with the with the prize exchange going back into Dorian's favor. Mm. There's a reversal energy not being used to its fullest extent. And there's the boss's orders on the Luminion. This could be risky. Of course, getting ahead in the prize exchange seems nice at this point in time. You're going to go down to two prize cards remaining. Maybe you can chain together those, have enough resources to close out. I don't think that there's a punish available, though. No Luxray. And certainly... Not in combination with boss's orders. Yeah, Alexander once again being incredibly risky to set Dorian's thoughts up for that swing back play. Luxray, reversal energy, boss's orders to knock out the Lugia V-Star and then go down to one prize remaining. If Dorian does not have that specific uh, set up right now, then Alexander can very easily kick back, take one prize, take one more prize because there's another Snorlax waiting to get powered up. I mean, Is there enough energy though? There's, there's no reason to try to rush for it this turn. It doesn't have to happen this turn. Dorian can take a knockout on this Snorlax, mm -hmm. feel comfortable going down to two prize cards. There's no V Pokemon in play. Alexander takes a knockout, goes down to one prize remaining, okay. and that can be the turn for the boss's orders Luxray combo after activating the gift energy here. Just take your time. Dorian does have a little bit more time than it appears uh, to make that combination come through and setting up and thinning the hand down as much as possible to get maximum value out of the gift energy is going to be the strategy. Dorian matching Alexander's pace by going down to two cards now, remaining in the prizes. And look at the difference here. This is a Luxray that cannot attack instead of a fully loaded Snorlax now because this Pokemon wasn't used last turn as the attacker. Mm -hmm. It just starts to slow things down, especially when you only have the one Archeops to start pulling with the Primal Turbos. And Alexander promotes the Lugia V-Star because there's now only one Archeops available. Needs to go with a Pokemon that has an energy already attached to it in order to attack. And what this means is Dorian no longer needs to get boss's orders, just needs to find the, the Luxray and the Reversal. Looks like the energy choice is to attach to the Snorlax, but without the Pokemon in the active position. Iono is a consideration with both hands low. However, there is a gift energy on the Snorlax. So uh, Yeah, Alexander, I think, committing to the Lugia V-Star play and then thinking better of it trying to pivot back into this uh, Snorlax. Still has jet energy in the hand. There's no energy. Is there energies. enough? Oh, whoa, oh, whoa, what? whoa, okay. There's still not enough. There's three. Huh? Oh, I'm missing one. Oh, my wow. goodness. Yeah, because the energy was stacked in that manner, Alexander also didn't properly yeah. consider the energy counts on the Lugia V-Star. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I mean, that's fine. Oh, that's going to be a missed attack. That's crucial here. Oh, that's fine. Go ahead. And that's just so this the means turn. that Dorian can hit this Lugia V Star with the Snorlax and threaten to take two prizes even without the Luxray. Now, wouldn't this be a cool situation for a deer? <laughs> Unfortunately, Dorian does not play that card, so the knockout is not going to be available this time around. Snorlax still. I must feel very comfortable attacking into this Pokemon. <laughs> you can finish this, the, the, the Lugia off with the speed shot from Archeops. And certainly there's not much else you need to do. Just announce the attack, thumping Snore into this Lugia. Therapeutic so you don't have to fall asleep. All the pressure back on Alexander. There's still a collapsed stadium in play. How do you remove this Pokemon? Yeah, it's a huge blunder here, Kyle. Alexander has to retreat this Lugia into the bench, find a couple more Pokemon down. Set up a second, and uh, you have to bump the Collapse Stadium, but you can't because you're only running Collapse Stadium. Yeah, <laughs> you'd have to be playing the vacuum to then mm -hmm. play your own Collapse Stadium. And it's not a card that we see featured any longer in these decks. And now so. Lugia V-Star seemed to be, you know, a Titanic attacker, 200 HP, just taking a prize and setting Alexander down to specifically forcing the opponent to have the Luxray to come back. Now has to pivot into the Snorlax, take the knockout and pray that Dorian doesn't have the boss's orders. Yeah, the hand 
for Dorian, we at least see the reversal energy and the Luxray ready to go, but I'm not sure if we saw the piece of boss's orders to close out the full combo. In situations like this, Kyle, the players always just top deck boss's orders for game, right? It has to be, yeah. If, if not off of the gift energy, then the top deck for turn certainly would get there. Yeah, the boss's orders is right there. You can <laughs> almost see it. There's a thumping snore. All right. Gonna take a look right there. Is the card available? One additional resource found. Snorlax to the hand. That's not going to be it just yet. One more card to look at. Is it the boss's orders or a Luminion? It's a Mizagosa for the flip. Here we this go. This is how we play Pokemon. Looking for heads. Tails. And now because of that, Dorian does still have, has access to the Luxray. But there's not the proper target now. Yep. Looks like just missed the rolling for Thumping Snore. Still asleep. Just like keeping everything nice and clean. I respect it. Oh, this is tough. Alexander Flatos with one prize card remaining. Lugia V-Star retreated manually, so I don't even know if there's enough energy to get this powered back up. The Luxray not going to be able to attack because of the reversal energy not being active. There's a DTE on the Archeops, if I'm not mistaken. Needs one more attachment there for a speed wing. That's not enough, though. Yeah, as far as Pokemon you feel comfortable attacking with in the spot, I think the only answer is Drapion V. I don't think that it's still around. I think it might be in the discard pile at this point, but it's a Pokemon that could potentially withstand a double turbo attack from a Lugia V-Star. And this is heartbreaking for Dorian Stocks. Alexander made a big mistake and put himself in a position where Dorian could have won this game and didn't have the boss's orders when everything was said and done. Now just going to go for a shuffle here. Um, so just assuming that another attacker is established, maybe if Snorlax goes down, is there simply not enough energy for Alexander to take a knockout regardless? Still looking for a potential secondary attacker. Maybe if you find the Drapion with the double turbo energy, you can work that Pokemon into the mix. Looks like Ultra Ball was found along with double turbo. Just not sure if which Pokemon are available. Is that a pass of the turn? Yeah, the Snorlax, Snorlax is still asleep, asleep because of the, the lack of therapeutic energy. There's a jet energy in hand. Jet. And that's going to be the promotion. There's a retreat there available if not. But, and there's the Iono. Iono puts the double turbo back on the bottom of the deck for Alexander. He can just retreat and attack with Snorlax, right? <laughs> I'm gonna just you watch. swag, just swag. <laughs> he's he's making up for lost time. This Lugia got robbed of one attack, and he's just making sure. That is a way to win Pokemon, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, Alexander <laughs> understands the mistakes that were made, but has to shake it off oh, and keep moving. <laughs> There's nothing much to do other than laugh at that point. But hey, that is a way to take a win there. And looks like we got the the slip out here. What's going on? Yeah, it's a 2-0. Okay, it was that fast. <laughs> By over. the way, that is a 2-0. We were so focused on the potential for the comeback for Dorian Stotts that when it didn't come through, it seems like we're living in a dream, Kyle. It, it doesn't feel like that was two games of Pokemon, but sure enough, <laughs> we did have a five-minute game one, and here we are now with the unusual way to make it to finals, to say yeah, the least. Yeah, Alexander Flatos. Just being the blessed one of Colorless Lugia. You make the strong read of the right meta deck. You make a couple audacious reads on your opponent's hand quality, Kyle. Take the big risks and never punished. Ever. Ever. Alexander Flatos, already a blossoming Pokemon player, developing his specific brand of plot armor right from the get-go. <laughs> you have to love it. And yeah. It was a wild back and forth here. We finally get into the second game where Dorian looks to have a phenomenal start. Big knockout there on the opening for Epion V. This is what led to a really good exchange. The Lux Ray found here along with the reversal energy. Able to knock out this Lugia V-Star. Take our players down to four, four prize cards. And Snorlax tried to mix it up a bit. Yeah, had the 
beautiful counter with the Lux Ray Reversal Energy specifically in the deck for this board state and didn't even get the additional rep for the Lux Ray when it was available. And Alexander Vlatos was opening a lot of windows and doors for Dorian to bring this to a game three, but when all was said and done, just did not have the card draw and the proper supporters at the right time to take advantage. I'm ready to watch five more games of this because it feels like we did not see enough Pokemon. Sure enough, that is enough to reach the finals for Alexander. Huge victory there in the top four. Now patiently awaiting to see who will meet him in the finals. I know, you have an insatiable appetite to see games of Pokemon, to cast Pokemon. I know that our viewers at home also want to see much more Pokemon be played. And we have one more best of three to go before we crown our regional winner here in Sacramento. And don't forget, that winner's also punching their ticket to the World Championship.